Dr. Heath Kelsey, who is a the program manager for the integration application network based in, um, he's based over in um, Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge, Maryland, at the Horn Point campus. He, he got his uh, bachelor's degree from St. Mary's here in Southern Maryland, and then went to, uh, to the University of South Carolina for both a master's and a PhD, and then following that he joined, uh, he was at the NOAA facility at Oxford as an e e ecological modeler. Um, and then in 2009 he became a science integrator with the Ian Group, and then uh, the last year he became the program manager for Ian. So he's been the lead uh, dog for um, this Mississippi River report card, among other, uh, the Great Bear Reef as well. So um, we are going to get this concept. This 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 talk is going to discuss this more, much more holistic uh, evaluation that, that we may want to think about regarding the Chesapeake Bay future. Okay, over to you, Keith. Great. Eighteen minutes starting now. All right. Thanks. Well, tells me he's going to have to get the hook out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. This is this is great to start talking about socioeconomic stuff um, that you, you guys brought up earlier, and it's like, wow, this is this is great, um, and it's something that we've wrestled with as report card folks, uh, as Bill said, and as you all know, we do a lot of report cards, and um, mostly ecosystem health based uh, and state of the environment. But we're there have been a couple projects that we've been involved with that are helping us evolve. A little bit towards including more pressure state and response, uh, and one of which you brought up already, the Great Barrier Reef report card, and then also the latest one, which we'll end up talking mostly about today, which is uh, uh, kind of taking a step back from starting with an ecosystem health-based report card and looking at broader management goals, uh, and that kind of forces us into a more balanced view of social, economic, and uh, uh, environmental uh, goals. And indicators. So um, I thought I'd talk about uh, assessment frameworks a little bit. This is an assessment framework that we uh, developed along with the folks at Harwell Gentilly and Associates and at uh, the Hart Research Institute for Gulf Studies. And this is the uh, assessment framework that we proposed for a uh, as yet unfunded um, Gulf of Mexico report card. We still have hope for it. We're gonna we're gonna keep uh, keep going for that. But you can see it's very. Um, it allows us to talk about pressure state response. We've added another S here for stressors, um, but that's not important. But we can cover that whole spectrum of pressure state and management response. And the, the impact part is where we talk about economy, society, and environment. That's where we bring in those things. So how are these things impacting um, society and, and economies? But it's still very centrally an ecosystem health-based uh, assessment. And our report cards, traditionally, focus on state of the environment. They're ecosystem health based and they focus on state of the environment, very deliberately, but that's where we've been. The best uh, example that you guys are all familiar with is the Chesapeake Bay report card. Um, and this is the uh, 15 reporting regions and track the, the overall Bay Health Index for, you know, since 1986. Um, and very deliberately is an ecosystem health-based report card focusing on state of the environment with these seven now uh, indicators. <coughs> but I mentioned that we had a, a bit of an evolution towards um, looking at more pressure state and response together. This is the, the central fold out of the first generation of the Great Barrier Reef report card. So we were able to look at what's happening in the watershed, what's, kept, what's coming out of the uh, the rivers and streams into the Gulf Lagoon or the the, the reef lagoon. So the, the resource that we're managing for is the state of the e ecosystem in the Great Barrier Reef ecosystem. Um, and these are the things that are impacting it. So pressures are the uh, nutrients, sediments, and pesticides that are coming into the Gulf Lagoon um, from the, the reef lagoon from uh, the upland areas watersheds and uh, we can set pretty aggressive goals so these are goals that were um, assessed or implemented by the Queensland state government 
um, and the Queensland government in conjunction with uh, growers and, and uh, scientists in the region. So 50% reductions in nutrients, pesticides, 20% reduction is called for in um, coke suspended solids entering the, the reef lagoon. Pretty aggressive. So that's the, we can look at the pressure and track that every year. Uh, the state, again, is the state of the ecosystem health for the Great Barrier Reef ecosystem. Um, and currently we have seagrass water quality and coral as our assessment groups of indicators. And within there we have separate indicators, abundance for, for seagrass, abundance reproduction, um, nutrient status and light availability. Uh, and similarly for water quality and coral, we have indicators that we can wrap up into or overall coral water quality and seagrass health. And then management response, um, the Queensland government and Australian government came together and funded at quite a, quite a good expense um, an initiative or incentives for farmers to adopt better management practices, management practices that would conserve more um, nutrient sediments and pesticides and use less of them. And these C and D practices are the ones that we want to avoid. So they've categorized the, the types of practices that uh, uh, agricultural industries and, and growers engage in and we want to move people off these uh, D and C ones and move them to the, the A and B ones. The, the D ones are really unacceptable, um, overly not conservative at all. At all. Uh, the C ones are the uh, minimum, bare minimum practices that, that they should involve in, uh, be involved in. B are accepted and very conservative and A are uh, cutting edge, even experimental practices that uh, they should be, should be looking at. So we want to move these folks from these D and C practices to A and B, and um, you can see that there's a little bit of variability here. There is some self-reporting issues that we have to deal with. There are some of those, so that's one of the reasons there's a whole lot of B here in the grazing uh, category. That's since been resolved a little bit in future uh, in subsequent issues, but um, we can track the, the effectiveness of this program to reduce uh, or to improve management practices on farms and then uh, look at the effect on loading and then look at the effect on the uh, ecosystem. So that's the first evolution that we've had that really engages us fully in the pressure state and response model. But it really doesn't get us to that socioeconomic uh, stuff that we've been talking about and, and um, if we we start with that fundamental idea that we're looking at an ecosystem health-based assessment, then it's very difficult for us to do. We're, we're kind of adding it on at the end or looking at um, uh, ways to incorporate it that might be a little bit forced. But we, we started working with the uh, Nature Conservancy through the uh, America's Watershed uh, Initiative. It's an initiative spearheaded by the, the Nature Conservancy, but they don't want to be identified only with them. Um, and, and they took about a year and a half or two years and said, okay, for the Mississippi River, this is a big river system, what is it that we want to manage this system for? It's not just environment, it's not just society, it's not just economy. What should we be managing this river system for? So they went out and they talked to stakeholders at, at multiple levels, at communities and CEOs of barge companies, et cetera, and said, what, what do we need to manage this river system for? And they came up with these six broad goals. So if we can manage the river system from top to bottom, the whole basin, for providing clean and adequate water supply, flood risk reduction and control, uh, supporting state, local, and national economies, provide for a clean environment, uh, ample and uh, good recreation opportunities, and then support that really important transportation corridor that is, it, it is really important for the nation and really the world economy. Um, if we can manage this river system on a holistic basis and achieve these six goals, we're doing pretty good. Um, that's their, the essence of their idea of uh, integrated river basin management. So they came to us and said, well, how, you know, if we wanted to do a report card, they kind of tracked how we would, how we're doing on this. How do we, how do we go about developing this, uh, this assessment? And through our work with report cards that, that Bill kind of started in, in Australia, brought back here, and now is going back around the world. Um, we, we've evolved or developed this five-step process. So the first step is to develop some kind of conceptual framework. So what are the issues? What are the processes that are affecting each one of these six goals? 
that will allow us to choose the most appropriate indicators for those. And then we define thresholds. How do we measure success? What does success look like for each one of these, um, these goal areas? Then we can calculate the scores and then communicate the results as a uh, uh, report card or some kind of uh, um, uh, science communication product. We want to do that for each one of these broad goal areas. So how do we, how do we know what we're, uh, if we're succeeding? How do we know uh, how we're doing in achieving this water supply management uh, goal area for the Mississippi River Basin? And so we've um, developed a, a workshop-based approach in the regional level. I'll talk about the regions that we work with in a, in a little bit. Um, but it's a really intense couple of days workshop. So the, the type of people we have are fairly uh, high up in the food chain. We don't get them for very long, but they are the ones that have the information that we want. We want the guys that are um, at the, the regional level and have information and knowledge about the, the system and expertise in each one of those goal areas. So we want economists, we want water supply experts, we want um, transportation folks. So we get the CEOs of barge companies in these meetings and they all sit around the room together and talk about these things. It's really great, but it's very intensive. Five left. Um, and uh, so we've, one of the first things we do is hand them a map. And so we've got all these people sitting around uh, a desk or a table. We say, okay, create your watershed. How would you do it? And it's really important because they're sitting around with other folks that are not from the same perspective that they have. We ask people to take a step back from their, um, you know, their, their uh, area of expertise or their you know, CEO hat. They take that off and, and think about it. Uh, about it as a citizen, so that's important. But it also focuses them on, okay, this is how I feel about the system, this is what I know, and it also means, well, where are the data that supply that? Where, where, how can I justify that? How can I back up my asser assertions about the, the state of this watershed for each one of these six goals? So we get them thinking about that. And then we have some breakout sessions and talk about indicators that were most appropriate for that region. Um, and uh, and these are the types of things that come out. So water supply, we have designated use, aquifer depletion, and the number of, day, of days of uh, water restrictions. And those are the most appropriate ones for that region, which happen to be the lower Mississippi River Basin. Um, we have non-expert and expert opinion. I don't want to get into that, but we like to have the, uh, uh, the opinions of everyone and like to know how the opinions differ from those folks that are really expert in that area and what everybody else thinks as well. And same with recreation, transportation, and ecosystems. So we have, uh, the only one that's different is the ecosystems one, thanks to Bill, it's gotta be different. Um, so we're gonna be divided that one up into biota, water quality, and habitat. Um, and we have two indicators that, that we're listing as priorities for those. One of the tools we've developed to help us do this, because I mentioned they're really intense workshops and we don't have a lot of time with these folks, is that we've developed an online tool uh, to do a survey ranking system uh, all kind of on the fly. So we can be in the room putting together this list of indicators. We come out of our breakout session, we have this list of indicators, we put them up there, and then we say, okay, uh, we talk about them a little bit, everybody in the room, rank them, uh, prioritize them using your phone go to this tool and you can just, you know, if I wanted uh, miles of levy as my top priority, I just go over here and drag it up to the top. You just arrange them in that in that order. And we really get immediate feedback from everybody. When we're done, we can show them the next slide and say, this is how this is how these things are coming out. We find it's really important because um, even if someone's indicator, their favorite indicator isn't uh, in the end, at the end of the day, it isn't one of the ones that we've chosen. It doesn't come, come out as one of the ones that uh, uh, ultimately informs or, or goes into the report card. We know and they know that their input was heard and that's really important. It's, it's equally as important to get all those people uh, bought into this as it is to, to, to pick their brains and get to the, get the knowledge out of, out of them. <clears throat> so I mentioned also that we have a regional approach we're, we, we would love to be able to do this on a very local approach, uh, local basis, and break up these basins into uh, smaller units, but it's just not practical at this stage. We've broken the, the whole of the basin up into six regions, recently combined the Arkansas, white, and the red into one region we're gonna do shortly. In September last year, we went to the upper Mississippi, 
um, and that we have these newsletters that come out of our workshops that kind of document progress or kind of uh, uh, breadcrumbs along the trail. So this is what we decided at this this workshop. Uh, and likewise, we've, we've done the Ohio River Basin um, in December of 2013. We just recently finished up the Lower Mississippi in um, uh, Memphis. So we got to go to Graceland, it's very nice. Uh, and uh, next month we're going to be going to Tulsa, Oklahoma to talk about these things in the, the, the Arkansas, White, and Red Rivers. And then shortly after that, we're going to go up to Rapid City and talk about the, do the same workshop uh, in uh, Rapid City. Um, after all that's done, we need to have one more meeting in June in Washington, D.C., where we take the results from all of these basins and uh, we wrap them up in a nice little bow and we say, okay, we're taking all the results. We need to, to think about this as a whole report card. Um, how do we integrate those results into the overall score? You'll also notice that this is still a state uh, kind of assessment. We need to be thinking about the next generation, which is how do we start looking at the management responses? Uh, we've already started talking about that. That's the next phase. And then also um, the, uh, the pressures. Can we link those to those, uh, those pressures? So that's a future generation of this report card process. Um, and I think that's, that's all I've got. I want to thank all of the organizations that we worked with on the report cards that we've talked about. <coughs> if you have any questions, <coughs> find me at UMSEs or uh, uh, yeah, find me on the way. Thanks.